we've seen that a firm with market power faces a downward sloping demand curve for its product, and it maximizes profit by choosing a quantity where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue and then prices along the demand curve. And where it ends up on the demand curve has a lot to do with price elasticity of demand. Now we've talked about price elasticity before as a measure of consumers' responsiveness to price changes. We've seen that if the demand curve is perfectly horizontal, then consumers are perfectly price elastic. And if it's perfectly vertical, then they're perfectly price inelastic. But we haven't really been precise about how we measure price elasticity of demand. So let's be a little bit more precise and define exactly what we mean by price elasticity of demand. We sometimes denote it by the script E with a subscript D for price elasticity of demand, and we define it as the percentage change in the quantity divided by a percentage change in price. Now, since demand curves are downward sloping, whenever price increases, and we therefore have a positive number at the bottom of this fraction, quantity is going to fall, and so we'll have a negative number at the top of this fraction. So this definition of price elasticity implies that we'll get a negative number. But we don't really want to keep track of negative signs, so we're going to just take the absolute value of this and get rid of the negative sign. So what does price elasticity of demand then have to do with these linear downward sloping demand curves that we've been drawing? So far it seemed like the slope of the demand curve is really a measure of the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. But if that were true, we'd have the same price elasticity of demand all along a linear downward sloping demand curve. But that turns out not to be true. So let's explore that a little bit further. Suppose you're at the midpoint of this downward sloping demand curve. By being at the midpoint, it means that this horizontal distance is exactly equal to that vertical distance. So if we get a 1% change in the price, a 1% increase in the price, we're going to see a 1% decrease in the quantity. Imagine starting just below this midpoint, increasing the price by 1% and ending up just above, then that 1% increase in price will lead roughly to a 1% decrease in quantity. So we'd have a 1 divided by 1, which gives us 1 for the price elasticity of demand at that midpoint. So here the elasticity of demand would be equal to 1. Now what if we were at some point above that midpoint on the demand curve? Then a 1% increase in price will lead to a decrease in the quantity demanded. But because we started with a low quantity to begin with, that decrease in the quantity demanded will be a large percentage change. So now we have a large percentage change, more than 1%, from a 1% increase in price. So we have a large number on the top and a 1 at the bottom. So that'll give us a price elasticity of demand that's greater than 1. What if we started at a point below the midpoint of the demand curve. Well then a 1% increase in price will again lead to a decrease in the quantity demanded, but because we started with a very large quantity to begin with, this ends up being a small percentage change. So now we have a percentage change in quantity that's less than 1 divided by 1 which will give us an elasticity of demand that's less than 1. So we can see that the elasticity of demand changes as we move along the demand curve. So now let's redraw that demand curve. Put in our midpoint. We know at that midpoint the price elasticity of demand is equal to 1. We know it's less than 1 down here and greater than 1 here. So as we move down the demand curve from the midpoint, the elasticity of demand falls. And if we used a little bit of calculus, we could show that it falls all the way to an 
elasticity of demand equal to zero when the demand curve crosses the horizontal axis. As we move up the demand curve from the midpoint, the price elasticity of demand becomes positive and it increases. And again, if we use a little bit of calculus, we could show that as we approach the vertical axis, the price elasticity of demand approaches infinity. So all along the demand curve, we have different price elasticities of demand. Now let's put into this picture the marginal revenue curve, which we know starts at the same point as the demand curve and has twice the slope. So it's going to intersect at half the distance, just below the midpoint. Now any marginal cost curve that we put into that picture, so let's put any kind of marginal cost curve, will intersect the marginal revenue curve to the left of the midpoint. In other words, when the firm then prices along the demand curve, it's going to end up on the price elastic portion of demand. Any elasticity between 1 and infinity, we're going to call relatively price elastic. Any elasticity between 1 and 0, we're going to call relatively price inelastic. And we can see that when we put that marginal cost curve into that picture, it's going to have to cross the marginal revenue curve to the left of this midpoint, placing us on this price elastic portion of demand. Now we can get the intuition for why that's the case by thinking about why would a firm never produce on this price inelastic portion of demand. So let's replicate this demand curve one more time, put in our midpoint, and let's imagine that the firm somehow ends up on this price inelastic portion of demand below the midpoint of the demand curve. We would then charge this price and produce this quantity. But now, if it increases the price, we would get to a new total revenue box. And that total revenue would have an increase in revenue from the higher price for all the goods that it continues to sell and a decrease in revenue from, spend, from selling fewer goods. But we can see that that increase in revenue from the higher price is larger than the decrease in revenue from producing a lower quantity. So when we increase price and we start it at a point like this, that implies that our total revenue is going to increase. And we're producing less, so our total cost is going to fall. If total revenue increases and total cost falls, that implies that profit increases. So if a firm ever found itself on the inelastic portion of demand, it can increase its profit by raising price and moving up the demand curve. So it would never actually do the best it can by producing on that inelastic portion of demand. Now you might wonder, well, why doesn't the firm stop producing at or stop raising the price once it gets to the midpoint of the demand curve? After all, we've said at that midpoint of the demand curve, total revenue is the largest it can possibly be. But firms don't care about total revenue. They care about profit. So the reason that the firm continues to move up the demand curve into the price elastic portion is because while total revenue is going to fall as it increases price from the midpoint, costs are going to fall as well. It wants to find the point where it's maximizing profit, and that's going to happen where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. The only way the firm is going to produce at the midpoint of the demand curve is if it doesn't have any costs. In that case, the marginal cost curve would lie on the horizontal axis. It would cross the marginal revenue curve just below the midpoint and would therefore place the firm on the midpoint of the demand curve. And that too should make sense. If the firm doesn't have any costs, 
then maximizing total revenue is the same as maximizing profit. Because profit is equal to total revenue minus total costs, if there are no total costs, then profit is equal to total revenue. So only if the firm doesn't have any costs would it produce at the midpoint of the demand curve. If it has any kinds of marginal costs, then that intersection will happen to the left, and it will end up on the price elastic portion of demand.